um, I mean, you've spoken about how amazing it is, but what would you say is your biggest challenge oh. in the entire space? Thank you. Internationally. For that. Thank you. It's having to think like an African American. I grew up here in Nigeria. Like, I was <laughs> born, bought, had bread, raised, everything in Nigeria. When I got there, I had to switch. So the switch includes the acclimatization. I have to think like an African American. I have to think like a Caribbean. I have to think like, an, like a Nigerian or an African that wasn't from Nigeria, that lived abroad all their life. And that's the major thing. Because the way you, the way you bring out your pieces, the way you have to connect to them. Mm -hmm. How do you connect to them? You have to think. These guys don't like the fact that they even came to the US. They feel like some part of Africa or our forefathers sold them. <laughs> so when I'm connecting to them, I have to think that these guys have suffered or their forefathers have suffered. How do I depict the clothes I'm bringing out? Whereas in Nigeria, all we had to do was just <laughs> bring out the clothes. clothes. Yeah. 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 You yeah. understand? They sold us. I don't, yeah. I don't it, suffer. I don't it wasn't suffer. my forefather that did it. You know. We didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you had to think that way, the way they can think, the way they think. So it needed me connecting with or calling young people like, hey, how do you think I can put out these pieces? How do you think, and it's still ongoing. How do you think I can do this? Like, oh, you know, you have to make sure that you're showing natural hair, you're connecting with them because that also stems from that. It also needs acceptance. You have to be able to accept my hair, whether natural, whether silky, whether 4C, whether 3C, coily or anything. I have to be able to accept it. So with that in mind, I need to be able to portray that, that I am for them. Oh, wow. It's an ongoing process. So that's, that's a tough one. Just it trying is. to be accepted. Accepted as a brand and accepted as being one of them who shares their pain in order to even make sales for your business mm -hmm. or put food on your table. That's mm -hmm. a task. I don't know if I'll be able to keep <laughs> forward with that patient, Sha. But I guess with the pros and the cons, the pros are more than the cons. Oh, yeah. uh, but let's talk about the, the runways, the fashion shows. Mm -hmm. um, I know that they always invite... Um, African artists, mm -hmm. African designers, and mm -hmm. all. Um, do they still get the same the same benefits as the international designers? Oh yeah, most definitely. I had um, a fashion show in February, New York fashion show. Excuse me. Excuse me. I had one in February, and they were buyers. They're always buyers. They're buyers. They're you know people from magazines, from everybody, and the res yeah, the acceptance was huge because they didn't even. I used Ashoke. I used Ashoke, so they hadn't seen things like that. It wasn't even as common as, you know, the, the African prints. So the acceptance was huge. I was surprised. I just wanted to, you know, get myself out there. So I went all the way from Maryland to New York for the fashion show, got all the pieces ready, and then it was huge. I'm getting, even till now, I'm getting calls to come do another one. Oh, you wow. know, in September, and I'm like, um, I think I'll pass. Mm. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> it's, it's tasking. Oh, yeah, a whole lot. And we had to beat everything. You know how beating takes work? It's a lot of work, putting in everything, trying to make all the styles, you know, come together and all that. So, um, yes, they do accept African designers. And, um, you know, internationally, they do. I've seen even, you know, designers from here. I've seen them in some stores. Mm. And that's, that's, the, that's the, you know... Where we're looking at okay so what how would you future. you know let's say you're predicting now maybe the next five years where do you see the african fashion um in the international space i should uh, in the next fashion shows or what? What yeah see? in the next five years i'm seeing even bb ray as a brand yeah. in stores like macy's okay. in stores you know all over the u.s you know they want quality can you produce quality that can match with international standards yes you can okay um can you produce in the mass that we want if you can yes you can call people that you can now talk to you know it, it's it's doable and i see it happening but it's a lot of work mm -hmm. do you understand it's a lot of work you have to keep at it mm, what's, the, what's the next what's the next phase in trying to develop the the Nigerian brands enough in a way where the level of reliance on these international brands uh, can be cut out hmm. or cut down, not cut out. It's a global 
it's a global world now. There's globalization now. So there's no way you can't do without um, the international market. It's like saying, do you want to get stock just you know, selling locally? They sell to us. We buy their bags. We buy their shoes. So why shouldn't we sell to them? Hmm. Do you get what I mean? It's a global world now. It, and Africa is on the global map. And we're there. We're shining. You know? So I don't see it as being dependent on them. I see it as they being dependent on us. Because I see them, some of them now moving from China to Africa to produce. We have the population, you know? Yeah, yeah. we do. All right, that's a great one. Thank you so much for You're coming welcome. through. We truly appreciate this conversation. It was very interesting. Thank and, you, you know, um, it's just very refreshing. Uh, but in general, do you think, uh, I wanted to wrap up, but there's this question I have about copying designs. Uh, is it also something that is being experienced over there in the international space? Is there a way that they control it there that you think that we can actually imbibe here? Unfortunately, no, you can't because it's creativity. I could have an idea. You could have a similar idea. So we, you can't trademark, you know, styles or ideas or anything. The most, like, um, like a brand like um, Chris Elbiton could do was have that um, red soles and they trademarked it. Aside that, the way ideas popping into everybody's heads couldn't be trademarked. So there's nothing to do about it. It happens over there. The, yeah, there's a few call outs. Oh my God, this brand copied my design, blah, blah, blah. Then Twitter, you know, they judge. But it dies down. Mm. That's about so it. There's nothing anyone can even do. Even no, if you waste your money and see, it's just wasted <laughs> efforts anyway. <laughs> it's, it's, I could, you know, I could, I could say that. I had the idea and I sketched it out and then you had yours and you know you sketched it out you know and then there's nothing to do about that the yeah. idea popped into my head okay well that's a great one thank you so much we You're hope welcome. to see you often it's yes. all right I'm going now. it's another five years oh no, no I don't think so all right. all right thank you so much for coming uh, Quincy hope you enjoyed your conversation <laughs> all right so our word for the day um, will be something very interesting for you trust me this is talking about memories and it says yesterday is but today's memory and tomorrow is today's dream yesterday is but today's memory Yesterday is today's memory, and tomorrow is today's dream. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. It's, it's not like it's sinking inside my head. <laughs> it was doing like very plenty tautology before. I was like, oh, all right. So what I'm thinking now is tomorrow. Oh, I'm dreaming of tomorrow. So tomorrow is to be like yesterday's dream. Ah, mm -hmm. super very wise. Well, this is by Khal Khalil Gibran. Do you have any word for today for us? Yes. Please tell us. Get a bloody calendar. Get a calendar? Yes, I'll stop confusing yourself about yesterday and tomorrow and next tomorrow. <laughs> Savage. Thank you. <laughs> Anyways, guys, it's been fun on the show. I hope you enjoyed every conversation we had. Thank you, Bibi, for coming through. Thank this is you. where we sign out. We will see you on the next episode, which is obvious like tomorrow because it's a live show. Every every day, every weekday, eleven to twelve. You're Fagi here Friday, keeping it down, holding it down. Oh, yes. Are you gonna be here Fudgy Friday? Definitely tomorrow not. is Fudgy Friday. Oh, I could have come tomorrow to come do some, some you know, you know sing, some moves. You sing. Oh, <laughs> but don't worry, you can still come tomorrow. You come and dance with us. We'll be right back, all right? Tomorrow, we'll see you. Bye, guys. Bye.